the key of wisdom proverbs chapter 24 please from verse 3 and 4 proverbs 24 if we can have it in amplified uh, that would be a great blessing if otherwise that's fine proverbs chapter 24 3 and 4 it says through wisdom is an house builded and by understanding it is established verse 4 it says through knowledge let me just quote it quickly for time the rooms are filled with every precious and pleasant riches through wisdom amplified says a life a home you know a destiny through wisdom it is impossible to arise in life and to live out your destiny isolating the subject of wisdom wisdom is the principal thing the bible says therefore get wisdom wisdom is the principal thing you cannot be a leader without wisdom you cannot be a man of god without wisdom you cannot be an entrepreneur without wisdom you cannot build finances without wisdom wisdom is responsible for mighty works wisdom is responsible for excellence everywhere you see excellence it would have come as a fruit of wisdom are we together now the bible says wisdom speaks of excellent things everywhere you see the spirit of excellence wisdom is at work there what is wisdom wisdom is the accurate application of the truths you understand so that they deliver the accurate application of the truths that you understand not the truths you know not the truths you have learned it is knowledge then understanding a comprehension of the working dynamics of that knowledge and then wisdom is the fortitude to engage so that it delivers there are many people who know what should lift them but they are not yet lifted because wisdom is not yet at work they are not in ignorance just because knowledge has arrived does not mean results will come it is knowledge a an intelligent collation of truth then understanding the comprehension of the working dynamics of those truths then wisdom the grace to engage that which you have now understood it is at the point of engaging it that god is committed to making it work in your life are we together there are many believers for instance who know that giving plays a role in your prosperity in the kingdom but very few have obtained grace to practice it or others have practiced it grudgingly without understanding there are people who know that a diligent hand will make fat are we together but very few people are actively diligent wisdom it says now that ye know these things happy or blessed are you if you do them i do not know anyone who has built an enviable destiny without contending for wisdom the bible says does not wisdom cry that she cries that those who are simple in heart should come to her by me kings reign wisdom is speaking and princes decree justice he says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness that those who seek me early will find me there is timing to wisdom how do you know that your life does not have wisdom by your results and the quality of your decisions the clearest proof of wisdom in your life is the superiority of your decisions if your choices and your decisions are self-sabotaging it may not always be an attack it is the bankruptcy of wisdom who is learning most people do not have wisdom they have ideas they have sincere hearts they even have character but you know wisdom is displayed in the quality of your decisions your choices and your decisions reveal whether wisdom is at work in your life or not so they bring a woman to jesus who was caught in adultery the bible says in the very act the goal was not the woman she was used as a trap to put him down and they said this woman was caught in adultery in the very act you claim you're a prophet sent from god tell us what to do about her situation it says no leave the woman say you see this man is not a preacher of righteousness 
and if you now negate what the prophets they say, you cannot be a true prophet because a true prophet will agree with what god has done with other prophets and the bible says jesus kept quiet silence is wisdom there are times that the answer is silence if you keep quiet you have already answered are we together now and he wrote on the ground exhausted their patience and then lifted up his eyes and said he who is without sin should cast the first stone and the bible says with one sentence they were pricked from the oldest because the longer you live the more you need mercy from the oldest to the youngest and they all left the woman there he said woman where are thine accusers he says neither do i condemn you go and see no more wisdom 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 do you know that decisions decide destiny decisions not intentions decisions you are here this morning because you made a choice to be here am i right on that there were many other places you would have been this morning this is a saturday morning or afternoon now and you decided to place all of them side by side and using whatever parameter you chose to be in church a sacrifice but a noble one are we together now your destiny tomorrow will be a summation of all these kinds of decisions to love Jesus and to be serious with him is a decision to live a life of integrity and character is a decision am I right on that to live a, a responsible life is a decision most people do not know that God gave man the power to choose from the day God gave man that ability um, it is very powerful because no matter what you lose there is one thing you can never lose your power to choose your power to decide you can make up your mind to be serious the prodigal son lost money the prodigal son lost a place in his father's house but one thing that he had was the power to decide and he said i will arise he was not advised by the holy ghost by himself as an act of his will he said i will arise it is still within my power to decide to arise you may not have the power to arise, but you can choose to arise. Are we together now? Everybody say wisdom. When you come to church like this, among the many things that you hear from your pastor are keys that prime you. He does not make the choices for you. He equips you with the tools that help you to make superior decisions. Are we together? The goal, the intent of every sermon, every seminar, every conference is that by God's grace, you are equipped with sufficient knowledge. But the final decision will be your responsibility. You can decide to waste away these days of encounter in the presence of God or to go back with a renewed heart being equipped now you understand the consequences that follow every decision so you can now make noble decisions decisions that are pro spirituality decisions that are pro transformation decisions that are pro wealth and abundance are we together decisions that are pro leadership most people do not know that if you lack wisdom in your life one of the fruits of wisdom is stagnancy because all the fruits of, of um, foolishness is stagnancy you will remain at the same level wisdom creates transition it forbids that you remain at the same position indefinitely it moves you from one level of success to the other you want to actualize destiny you want to arise you must cry for wisdom the bible says if any man lacks wisdom let him ask of god the ultimate custodian of wisdom is god some of you need to pray and when we get to the session of prayer please pray i am tired of making foolish decisions i made 11 decisions this year 10 of them took me backward it means you need wisdom you don't have to be wicked you don't have to be evil once you do not have sufficient knowledge you do not have understanding and then you lack wisdom your life is already pegged indefinitely but i pray for you in the name that is above all names where you have made decisions that are self-sabotaging where you have made decisions that have taken you 10 years backwards in the name of jesus christ may you begin to make quality decisions that will quantum leap your destiny shout a believers amen wisdom it is wisdom to make the choice to seek his face every day it is wisdom to make the choice to select and edit the kinds of relationships that you have around your life 
Are we together now? I'm sure some of you may have heard me say that if you are around five foolish people, you did not count well. There are six foolish people there. And if you are around five wise people, you didn't count well. There are six wise people there. You will always be a reflection of the company you have decided by your choices to allow a space into your life. The Bible says, he that works with the wise will be wise himself. But it says, a companion of fools shall be destroyed. When the devil wants to destroy you, he does not bring evil. He keeps you where evil is happening. And when you keep gazing at it sufficiently, like Lot, all you need to do is to settle near Sodom. Eventually, you will find yourself in Sodom. Are we learning now? Praise the name of the Lord. Wisdom. Behind mighty works is wisdom. Behind exploits in ministry, wisdom. Behind a thriving business, wisdom. Are we together? Behind an exceptional family, wisdom. It's important. You cannot brush through the subject of arising, building, thriving, excelling, and ignore wisdom. No matter what key you omit, wisdom should not be one of it. Do you believe what you're hearing this morning? For some of you, you are at the edge of a new season you are wrapping up your yesterday and stepping into tomorrow what you need is greater wisdom greater wisdom greater wisdom if you seek wisdom with passion you will be amazed you will make decisions that will quantum leap your destiny for instance did you know that the decision alone to select quality godly friends with character integrity if that is the only decision you make per year, you have already scheduled yourself for a great life. The decision to say no to destiny destroyers, the decision to say no, the decision to shun dishonor is a decision that will quantum leap your life. Because there is only one reason why people fail in life, dishonor. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men dishonor to principles so the decision to embrace honor as a lifestyle to god to his ways and to men alone can take you places not knowing so much but that all you know is honor it will open doors of businesses for you it will open doors of contracts for you it will endear you to the heart of people and endear them to you who is learning this morning the decision to create a prayer schedule that no matter what happens, I create a prayer schedule intentionally. I make my prayer life constructive. That is wisdom. The decision to go for a retreat periodically, to assess my life, to assess my growth, to appraise myself unemotionally and come up with decisions that move me forward. Wisdom. Many people have not embraced wisdom they are not even aware of the consequences of foolishness they allow their lives to just you imagine someone driving down a ditch and he just said the car and he's firing he's not holding you know the steering and he hopes he will arrive well wisdom is like holding the steering of your destiny and navigating it properly the only way you drive well even if it is a self-driving car you have to initiate the process are we together when you see how pilots fly, at a point in the flight, they don't do anything again. They could leave the cockpit and walk around just with people and sometimes even fall asleep. Because the initial process, they have set it on a course that will guarantee that it arrives well. But there are times of turbulence. Once there is turbulence and, you know, the, the weather condition is turbulent, the pilot will have to settle down and wake up because he knows that these are moments where he has to be sensitive. People could die if he's careless. You are at a sensitive period in your life. Before you take action, make sure you take it with light, knowledge. Don't take rash and careless action. Do you know that it is wisdom to be patient until you are guided by sufficient knowledge? So when people put pressure on you and say, can you decide this? You don't make destiny defining decisions in a hurry you should not be slow in deciding but if your purpose for marking time is to get sufficient knowledge you are wise it is cheaper bargain than recycling your pain again because of lack of knowledge are we together there are some of you who just joined a club you didn't know what you joined 
it was when they sent you the bill for subscription you said oh, you didn't tell me why didn't you take the time to find out people do things without thinking can you sign this sign here your signature here and then eventually you find out that you sign that all your pension half of it should go to them i say you didn't tell me wisdom wisdom can deliver people from trouble who is learning this morning pray in one minute whilst you are seated and say father in the name of jesus let your grace let wisdom rest upon my life let wisdom rest upon my life i'm tired of making foolish decisions someone is praying sincerely wisdom some of you have made very bad financial decisions bad business decisions because of lack of wisdom you are asking god for mercy now in jesus name we pray amen in jesus name we pray how do you get wisdom one by meditation two by study of scripture three by studying the materials of those who are carriers of wisdom one meditation in the place of meditation you give the holy spirit room to pour in ideas destiny advancing ideas the bible says in proverbs 18 and verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself seeket and intermeddleth with all wisdom number two the study of scripture the bible is called the wisdom of god hallelujah when you take the time to learn the ways of god you make decisions that are consistent with scripture number three when you study the materials of people who are carriers of wisdom the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise if you are struggling financially for instance you find the materials of people who have a proven track record to have risen financially with the dignity of integrity and you will find keys there you will see what you are missing because you are studying it prayerfully the holy ghost will open your eyes to see ah this is where i'm missing it all boils down to choices and decisions the purpose of knowledge is to equip you so that you make the kinds of choices that move you forward may you go forward by making right choices say amen in the name of jesus christ what's the one thing holding you back from living the life god has called you to i bet it's fear fear that whispers you're not enough you can't do it you'll fail but what if i told you god never intended for you to live in fear in fact he has given you everything you need to overcome it today we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that god has already placed inside of you and it all starts with one thing faith let's dive in Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? 
practical steps to overcome fear. So how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter four verses six to seven tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.